Um, I don't know how I missed this. I see it since September 21st. But uh, this has some um, news about uh, the Eliza Fletcher. Uh, even though this doesn't deal with Eliza herself, this does deal with the situation. And uh, Eliza means uh, has a very special place in all of our hearts here at the channel. It's um, It was a, a bone-chilling weekend when she went missing. I uh, have an incredible team here that helped me uh, cover the entire story. We were ahead of some of the breaking news. And, uh, of course, I'm a Memphis guy, so I do definitely want to keep up with this. So, a uh, woman uh, told police that she was raped by a suspect a year before Eliza Fletcher murder. Now, we know about this woman because she was the one, I, I believe this is the same one. Okay, I believe this might be the same one. I, we're going to read this and find out. Had the rape kit that was... Uh, so what was it? It was revealed, or not revealed, but um, returned with a positive uh, DNA analysis. Uh, the f couple days before Eliza uh, went missing. Gosh, I can't remember now. It's it's all become a it's such a, a haze. All this has happened so quick, and I can't believe that I came back and found this. Um, I was actually looking at other, uh, stuff, uh, Memphis news when this popped up. Another alleged victim of Cleotha Absin Henderson, Pookie, don't forget his name is Pookie, was his nickname, uh, is speaking out about what happened, uh, to her and how the murder of Eliza Fletcher might have been prevented. Uh, Alicia Franklin Blames Memphis police for not following up on her 2021 rape case, and as we first told you Monday, is suing the department. WREG doesn't normally uh, don't name. No. WREG doesn't normally don't name. Hmm. Don't you miss editors? Uh, the victims of sexual assault, but Franklin says she wants to go public to hold MPD accountable after the fallout from her. Uh, investigation. I just remember, guys, and I don't know why this is a thing, but evidently the tubes do not like it when you say certain words. I don't know what to the what extent they don't like it. All I know is is that if you hear me say something or kind of stutter on something, because I'm trying to get around all the uh, um, formalities you have to face as a uh, content creator. In September of 2021, Alicia Franklin decided to meet up with a guy she'd been talking to on a dating app. They were going to go to dinner. First, they met at what she said was his residence at Lakes at Ridgeway Apartments. But as soon as she got inside what she thought was his unit, his tone changed. He put a gun to her neck and a black t-shirt over her head and said, oh, she said, he was like, don't move. I'm going to you franklin said uh she says the empty unit looked like it was being renovated it had concrete floors he forced her outside through a back door into a vehicle and um assaulted her i think you say assaulted i don't know multiple times that's when he abused me she said i begged and pleaded i was like please let me go i'm pregnant he didn't care at all. He said that he had abused people on a daily basis. Jeez, man. Let's take this guy out of the gene pool. Guys, I'm sorry, man. I don't have sympathy here. I don't have sympathy. And we're at a point where we have to have those conversations. I mean, my gosh. She thought she was going to die at the Hickory Hill Apartments. Instead, she was the one, he was the one that fled. After that, she got uh, out as quickly as she could, even leaving her purse behind as she went to the police. She su uh, submitted testing for DNA, then brought officers back to the scene where she located her purse. She gave them all the information she could, including the first name Cleo, his phone number, and where she met him. 
Police took an instant report in three a- within three hours of the attack. She said she spoke with the detective again the next day and did a photo lineup. She thought she could identify her attacker, but couldn't be sure. They promised to get better pictures, including a more updated photo of Absent Henderson for a photo lineup, but she says she never heard from him again. After that, as far as she knows, they made no efforts at all to find the suspect. So now she's going to sue the Memphis Police Department because they didn't do anything before Eliza Fletcher, right? So that doesn't make sense. How about this one? Follow up. Have you heard anything? Is there anything new? Do I need to come back in for a lineup? Stay on them until you get this guy in jail. Yes, I understand you did all this stuff, but there's still the police department. You know what? Stuff slips through the cracks every day. And whether you want, I mean, this is just, it's heinous, okay? It should be a uh, capital offense. That's my soapbox. But they've got to do stuff every day. When you've got people out here protesting to defund them and stuff, they have to stand out there with those people that are shouting at them, calling them names and everything to make sure those people stay safe. Those people are, don't get, uh, uh, a riot doesn't ensue out of it. I mean, just just whenever you see something like that, okay? Remember, you're taking away resources from when police could be doing stuff like following up and finding this serial abuser. I have no sympathy. Okay, I don't I'm sorry. There's no more of this defund anything or anything else like that. This is what happens. Due process is a two-way street. Eliza Fletcher's due process rights were violated. Um, in the meantime, I'm sorry, police committed at least one other, uh, police say he committed at least one other crime of kidnapping uh, after Fletcher. Uh, had they done their job, had they evaluated the DNA kit, they would have confirmed clearly that Absent Henderson was the man who abused her, uh, our client, and would have been off the streets before he was able to hurt anyone else, Jeff Rosenblum said, her, their, her attorney. Here's the thing. It is not the Memphis police fault. It is the TBI. There is a process here. The process failed everyone. Okay? The system failed. Uh, the pattern of Ms. Artini's arrest suspect explains why Franklin is now suing the MPD. There's a young woman who's gone because the police didn't do what they should have done. He, he described his client as a hardworking person in our community and didn't have the ability to pick up the phone and call the chief of police or mayor or the governor. Actually, you can call them. They have numbers there. they are not going to answer, but you can call. The TBI says they proceeded to uh, process the evidence immediately in the Eliza Fletcher case because of a rush request from MPD. Uh, Franklin's lab work was still being processed when Fletcher was um, taken from us nearly a year later. MPD is not responding for a request for comment. So there you go, man. There, That's the new one here. This is what gets me. Um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? He said that he did this on a daily basis. The guy doesn't. He doesn't need to be in the gene pool. He's tainted, man. He's cursed. A children he has, they're cursed. I mean, you know that's actually that's actually a theory. I want I can go into it because I don't believe in it. But I'm just saying that this guy does not need to be in the gene pool. He is just pure evil. So I'm sorry this is a late update. Um, I need to stay on these more. You guys know I've had a lot of hard times here lately. uh, Dealing with hospital stuff for a loved one. But as always, I do believe the best is yet to come. Things will get better. And I still pray daily for Eliza Fletcher, her family, the children she left behind, her husband that was wrongly wrongly accused on social media when this was going on, and 
I just think that we can do better as a society. So that's it. I'm sorry. I got off my soapbox now, but I love you guys. Thanks for checking me out. Please hit that subscribe. Please hit those likes. Get my, uh, help me grow. And as always, guys, uh, Godspeed and watch out for that boogeyman. Okay. Talk to y'all later. Thank you.